Hey, everyone. We should have some uh, some other people joining us in a second. Hello. Hey, Lima. Okay, I don't yeah. remember your audio settings for future se uh, sessions works. <laughs> it made me redo it all. All right. All right, I think we're just, yeah, we're just gonna get this party started early. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Um, I'm, I'm Dan Stoll, VP of Engineering at Replit. Um, I'm joined here with um, our engineering managers. Um, we're still a small, small team. Um, there are millions of Replit users, but there are only 25 engineers at Replit. So the, oh, Barty, I didn't see you. <laughs> But <laughs> uh, we're also joined by Bardia, who leads um, support engineering. Um, and many of you may know from telling us about the things that are going right and the things are going wrong. Um, at Replit, support is a part of engineering. It's, um, it's, key, it's important that support be able to build tools to make support go better for everybody in the community. And also that um, they, they, they improve the product. So um, that's super exciting. Um, so like I was saying, we've got a small team, of about 25 engineers, and there are millions of users. So absolutely everyone on the team has huge, huge impact. Um, and that's what that's what makes it really exciting um, and energizing to come and, and build this tool for everyone learning to code or just needing to code from wherever they are. Um, and I've seen a lot of questions in the chat that I want to address right now. So first off, age requirement. You have to be able to legally work wherever you live. I don't know where that is for you. We have had, um, we have had 15 year olds and 16 year olds intern at Replit um, and produce huge work. Um, and so um, check, wherever you live, and then, um, and then if you're above age, then yeah, we'd love to hear from you. People want to know, what is our internship program? If <clears throat> each, see, each summer, we try to hire an intern for each team. So mobile, data, platform, workspace, product engineering, support engineering, business, um, community, design, we try to hire one intern per season. Engineering is full for this summer, and we should get the details out for the next season soon. We will, we will get that up on Discord um, when we have it. Um, but we like to batch things up so that people can come in together and, and join and, and learn together as they're going. Um, and yes. Lima, Jeremy, Scott, Bardia, do you have anything to add to those two hot topics? No, but we do have some some questions coming in in the in the Q and A section that we could start working through. Yes, let's do it. Um, the first one that I like is uh, what is the tech stack for Replit's backend? And I I posted a follow up there because we kind of have two backends. Uh, so I'll, I'll let Scott talk about the infrastructure backend, but uh, for Replit.com, the website that you go to, it's as uh, standard as possible as a JavaScript app. So we run Express.js, we have a Postgres database, uh, we use uh, GraphQL to send data back and forth, as many uh, community members know, but we try to keep it as boring as possible in that part of the technology so that we can spend our time building cool features and interesting stuff and not worrying about, uh, you know, if the server is always going down and things of that nature. Yeah, and then somebody was asking about web sockets. So that web socket connects out to the backend infrastructure, which is mostly written in Go and it's hosted on Google Cloud Platform. Um, some of that's Kubernetes, some of it's not. And uh, there's a little bit of Rust in there because the team is very passionate about Rust and sometimes it's the right tool for the job, uh, but mostly it's Go code running on Google's cloud. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're heavily, we, we try to use the right tools for the job and as few tools as possible. So lean heavily on TypeScript and Go and open protocols such as, such as protobufs. Um, and we should, we should post the, the, the percentage of rust. <laughs> I, I, think that, I think that metric will be going up in 2022. Um, sometimes, sometimes in. memory miniature. Yeah, it does sneak in. Um, we should, yeah. Um, and what's, what's our mobile tech stack, Lima? Yeah, I, um, I have some FOMO for Rust myself. Uh, I almost debated trying to build this app in Rust somehow. Um, we are going to, um, we're going to be leaning into our React roots. So for the native build, um, we're going to be using React Native. Um, we're leveraging a lot of the, um, the back end that Jeremy mentioned. So everything will be GraphQL powered um, and Rust based. Otherwise, um, yeah. So we we like to keep it simple and then uh, scale from there. Yeah. And Phil, I see you're you're asking. Are there any learning projects you'd recommend? Um, I I mean, my advice is always to go out and build projects and get real users, actual humans, using your stuff. That's that's always the best. And when we see people have done that, we instantly want to talk to them um, because there's so much that goes into running a product or a service that other people use um, that you can only really learn by doing that. That said, if you want a leg up on Replit specifically, um, you, there's no faster way to learn than to try to go build Replit essentially or parts of Replit. It's a really good education in all parts of the stack. And we like to hire generalists who can build UI and, and scale backends um, and are comfortable diving in anywhere. And the, the fastest way to learn that is to, is to do it. Yeah. yeah, I would say any, I think Amjad's uh, post is a little bit about um, getting your hands dirty and trying to do it for yourself is the best way to learn a topic versus just the book, sometimes both. But uh, like Dan said, try, building something to try and get users is probably the best learning experience. And something that you're excited about building is probably a, a good way to try and chase that. Yeah, and, and along those lines, um, people are asking if if you need a certain type of degree. No, you do not. We we just want we just want to see that you've gone out and built something in the world and and shared it with other people and and gotten them to use it. Um, no, no particular degrees or years of experience required. And someone's asking, what does a typical interview look like? Um, just like the best preparation is building a project that gets used in the real world, we try to make our interviews mimic a day at Replit. So, um, so we've got various uh, points. At the beginning, you do what we call a tech screen, where you program for an hour with someone on the team, and that's that's um, that's to that's for you to to be able to see see. Okay, this is what it's like to get a problem I haven't seen before and work on it uh, with a Replit engineer, and, and we get to see. Oh, this is how you tackle something we haven't seen before. Then for on sites. So Virtual on sites when we invite people for many hours in a day. Um, we design a system together. We ask you to go build it. Um, bonus points for building it on Replit. Um, and it's also easier for us to help us help you if you do. And then we ask you to present your work back and, and then and then we we hang out and talk about the work and give you a chance to ask us any questions. So we really try to mimic a day in the life so you can see what it's like and, and we can see what it's like working with you. Um, that's that's the most, that's the only reliable way I've, I've found <laughs> to know how it is to work with someone. Um, is there a new grad program? Um, there's not an explicit program, but we are looking for early career engineers, especially in platform. Um, so if you've got if you've uh, if you got a passion, you're excited about Replit, you've shipped some projects, um, please reach out. You can either apply as a platform engineer early career, or you can apply under the engineering general other category, and we'll be we'll be happy to talk to you.
<laughs> I see we're, we're getting some people asking about the Replit public API. All right, <laughs> that is that is out of scope for this session. Yeah, <laughs> come, I love yeah. come, I mean, come yeah. work here <laughs> and you can build it. Yeah. yeah. Or you can, or find us a security engineer, and then we can make it the world safe for the Replit public API, and then we can build it. Um, yeah. Um, for remote work, we have people working all over the world. We've had people working from Gaza. Um, we've had people working from Europe. Um, we have someone working from India right now. Um, various Middle East countries. Uh, Bardia, I think you're in Argentina right now. Um, so yes, we hire remote, we hire globally. The important thing is that um, four days out of the week, you've got to be available 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Like you've, got to, you've got to move your schedule around. So that way we all have a common time that we can get together. Someone else asked, do we, do we work async? Um, we try to do async as much as possible um, because we're so distributed. Um, and we try to really pack all our meetings into Mondays. Monday is like the meeting day. And then we have Deep Work Tuesday where there's nothing, no regular meetings on the books. You just go and you implement and the rest of the week um, you take from there. Um, so we try to do as much async as possible, but um, we're, we're a startup. We need, to, we need to collaborate. We do need to be available for each other during core hours. There's a couple of questions that are kind of related. One asking how much SRE work and then one asking how much DevOps in backend development roles. I suspect those questions are kind of asking the same thing. Technically, we only have one SRE in the company right now. Uh, we would love to have more. So if you're an SRE, please, please, please apply. Um, but yes, the platform team does have to. So when you only have one SRE, he mostly tries to teach others how to think like an SRE and keep the site up, which is a great skill. So I would say everyone's doing some like 20 to 30% pitching on that stuff. Like Jeremy's team isn't in the platform infra, but they do a ton in here. Uh, it's much appreciated. Yeah, and I, I think that relates to a question from Ian, which is what's a skill you developed after starting as an engineer that you didn't expect to? And I think it's bits and pieces of a lot of those things. You get to see what it's like to be a database admin or a SRE or a security engineer. Um, even you know if you're on the product team, a designer. So you kind of get bits and pieces of all these skills that I didn't really expect coming in. Yeah, maybe um, less of a engineering skill um, and more of a sort of people skill. Um, the nature of working remotely at Replit means you are doing a lot of demos, you're doing a lot of presentations. We write a lot um, so that, you know, the we have artifacts of decisions we've made of design decisions that we've made. Um, so you really get better at communicating, you get better at writing at Replit. Um, and that's a really great skill for life in general. So I like to think of Replit as like a really cool, um, almost leadership factory. And someone, Quinn asks how mentorship and, and learning works at at Replit, um, we assign everybody a, a buddy when they're when they're first starting out to just be that person that you can just ask anything to at any time. Um, and we also have um, we also record as much as we can of of what we do of of tech talks so that people can can absorb it that way and try to write down as much as we can. One of my favorite parts of Replit is the Repl Ask channel in our Slack where it it. It is what it says on the tin. Like if you have a question, you ask there. And the the really powerful thing is you'll see absolutely everybody at the company, from executives to to interns to anywhere in between, asking questions there. It's always okay to ask questions. It's encouraged, um, and because it's safe to ask questions, and because everyone does it, um, people don't have to walk around saying, oh, I don't know this and, and I don't know how to find out. Um, so it just leads to really fast learning. Um, we also have a very strong demo culture of like build something, show it off. I've got an idea, make it make it real, build a proof of concept, build it in a REPL. Um, and then that's a great way to get feedback. And we're always 
giving each other feedback and and everyone's also open to receiving feedback which is um just makes it like a joy to come to work um we can pick some of these up randomly uh there's a few asking about salary or how pay works for remote employees um Horror stories about jobs paying per line of code. Wow, I would love to work there and I would bankrupt them. <laughs> it wouldn't be good code. It might not run, but I could put out a lot of lines you, of code. You, you, you'd write the program that writes. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of uh, code. Yeah. yeah, so uh, the, the pay is uh, based on sort of your amount of experience and your location. So it's very hard to give a generic answer to that, especially when we have people working all over the world. Um, but we do pay competitively. So um, I was previously at Google, which is like a big tech company with way too much money on the books. Um, and it wasn't a, a big difference when I came here. Shelby asks how we support people so we can, we can keep having a diverse team. Um, Shelby, I think a lot of that is the, yeah, the, the buddy system and making it possible for people to ask questions and leaving room for anyone in the company to demo and, and share. Um, and that's, that's been a key part of what we do. We have people from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, we have people who, you know, were interning for us while still going to high school. Um, we have people who, um, you know, it's their first job. Um, they haven't gotten a degree, or, or they've they've just come to the U.S. or they're they're working um, somewhere else in the world. So, um, the the secret is to making it, just to make it easy for people to ask questions, find out what they don't know, like get constant constructive feedback, um, and grow as as um, you know as as engineers and also as as people. This Q&A um, is off the hook, by the way. <laughs> so many questions. I'm trying to answer some with text, but uh, Hopin's a little buggy. So I apologize. I'm getting to some of these slow. Somebody was asking uh, kind of a simple one. Are we open to using any programming language in the tech screen? Uh, absolutely. But if you're being asked to build something in the browser, that probably means some flavor of JavaScript framework. So uh, on the back end, it's very flexible. Pretty much every language has a, a server you can build in it. It still blows my mind people build silvers in JavaScript, but we're way past like JavaScript supremacy, so. Uh, Josh asked a really good question about how we balance um, freeform creative work and sort of more of the JIRA ticket style of work. Um, we have a very strong ownership culture and a process that tries to represent that. So all projects, features, um, big and small, start out by having an owner, someone who's going to see that whole thing through from the start to finish. And those uh, folks are empowered to make the decisions. So we have the feedback culture, we have demos, um, you, you get as much as you um, need from people, you use data and we lean on our product uh, team for that for those insights, um, for measuring impact of our changes. But at the end of the day, we trust people to make the decisions. Um, and the support on the team is really um, awesome because it's okay to make mistakes as long as we're learning from them. Um, we have postmortems, we have, um, you know, this thing called correction of errors sometimes. So we're always trying to learn from our mistakes, but it's important that we give people the space to, you know, to run and make those mistakes sometimes. Um, and uh, yeah, we, I mean, creativity is at the root of our, um, you know, product development process. Like we're trying to build something new and radical. Um, Andre talked about the roots of the company and how we've always been pushing, um, pu pushing the technology to its cutting edge. So um, creative thinking is really important. Creative problem solving is super important. We're doing things that don't have a playbook. Um, so all of that factors into your day-to-day -day work. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's big or small, 
um, you'll always find that the challenge is creative. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of good questions here. And like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd echo that. Most most everything you see on Replit started as some some random idea at, <laughs> and, and that that just grew. So um, that's that's at our core. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about, you know, what do you look for in CVs or resumes? Um, I, I think evidence that you have gone and built and put, put something out in the world and had re real users is very exciting for us. Um, and then outside of like the, a resume, a CV, even a personal website can only express so much of you. It's, it's a small, small slice. Um, and what I really pay attention to, and Scott, Jeremy, Lima, you can, Bardia, you can, you can chime in too, is um, we, we ask like, why Replit? Um, and, and, um, and people who have been using Replit have ideas for Replit um, or, or having, having a compelling reason why um, joining this mission is going to be, um, is, is going to help them in their own mission. Um, and how they can likewise help is, is super interesting. Um, that's that's the first thing I look at when when I'm looking at new candidates. Yep, and that's probably also covers uh, Michelle's uh, question. I have no luck in my job search so far as SDE. Sorry to hear that. Uh, want to be considered with no previous experience but the drive. And so what Dan says is a great way to get noticed. Um, it can just be a personal project, but if you can show it to users, show that you care, really polish it and get people using it, that catches our attention. So uh, we just hired somebody who had pretty limited professional experience, but some really cool side projects. Um, and that got us excited. We talked to them and now they're joining Replit. So that is a totally valid path. And I see how many people are we going to hire in 2022? Will engineering jobs at Replic become more or less available in the future? Um, so, um, yeah, we've got, if, if you all saw Amjad's keynote, like we're building a lot. We've got a lot to build. Um, so, so we, the, the more people we can hire, um, the, the faster we can build to a certain extent. Um, we can't, you can't take a team double it in two months and hope for it to to be productive so so um i i don't think we're going to more than double engineering in any by by the end of the year but we will come close um and we're always looking for great passionate people um there's there's really no limit on how many of those we would love to hire um and ooh, this is a good one what are you most excited about um I, I'm I'm excited about all of it. I per, per, I'm particularly excited about being able to reach people all over the world. Um, we're working on distributing our infrastructure so that REPLs run in data centers across the globe. Um, Lima and her team are building a mobile app that's going to reach so many people that wouldn't otherwise um, have access to programming. Um, so all those projects that just lower the barrier to programming like i am i'm excited about those we've we've got lots um i don't, I don't know if you all are excited about anything else themes uh I, and more generally just making Replit feel like your home like like your place um i think is is an underrated aspect of of writing code is is being comfortable in your environment and if we can bring that for beginners and people who have been coding for a long time, I think it's going to be super exciting. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I'm always excited about any project that puts more power in all of your hands and then just seeing what cool things you come up with because there's way more of you than us. <laughs> and so you're going to outdo us with cool ideas. And so we're constantly trying to knock down barriers give you more APIs, whatever we can do to give you more power. Yeah, how do we how do we measure productivity? Um, and then I saw other people asking how how much do people have to work? Um, 
we're, we're not watching for people to punch time cards. We're not expecting a certain number of hours per week. Um, I've, a bunch of us have families and are, are part of different situations that, um, you know, that require attention outside of work. So we're really focused on outcomes. Like, are, are you shipping? Are we hitting the goals we need? Um, and we, we care less about measuring the inputs, like number of lines of code, number of hours spent. That said, if you come in as an engineer and you are um, shipping a pull request or shipping about a change a day, like sometimes that's sometimes you're doing research or design and, and that's that's not feasible. But if you hit that pace where you're putting something out into the world once a day, um, that's a great place to be because you're going to be getting feedback, um, you're going to be learning, um, and the rest sort of will take care of itself. So that's what we encourage people just joining to do. Um, and we don't really pay too much attention to all the other stats outside of that. Um, um, Mateo asks a good question. Dog fooding. Um, can you give us a few examples, the most extreme ones? Uh, yeah, this is a very, um, very passionate topic for us at Replit. Um, we want to, you know, our ideal is to completely build Replit within Replit. Um, we have some ways to go to do that 100%, but um, there's a lot of things we're doing already. Um, number one is we encourage building projects on Replit. So um, everyone on the team has some REPL that um, they've built that does something cool and fun. Um, we try to prototype on Replit when we demo new ideas. Um, and every time we do that, it's just a breath of fresh air because, you know, deploys happen instantly, hosting happens right away. So it's always fun for us. Um, we also host all of our knowledge corpus on Replit. So do all the documentation um, and design docs and um, notes, meeting notes, project sort of management things, we try to keep in uh, lots of different REPLs as well. Um, but yeah, anyone else? <laughs> the most extreme case is uh, all Replit deploys used to run in a REPL. Um, and so the, the first incident I caused, um, sorry, everybody, uh, in May 2020 was I changed that deploy code and, um, and wrote a bug and took all the back ends out of the load balancer so nobody could, could get to it. So um, that, was, that, was pretty, that was pretty hardcore. Yeah, it's more than I would have thought. Uh, you know what? We have a little bit of a panic sometimes when somebody leaves the company and you want to figure out which of their REPLs the company is built on top of. Because uh, in the past, there, you know, it, it was we didn't have the team structure to build the REPLs for a company yet. We have a fun. We have a bunch of bots that run in REPLs um, that we've integrated into Slack. Um, one of them is. Well, there's a lot of good ones, but one of them is the lunch bot. So we have a lunch roulette every week, and there's a bot that will post a question for you to um, discuss at the lunch roulette. And um, I think Talo built that one. Dan, here's a, a good question for you. What are Replit's plans for developer relations roles? Are they going to oh, be- Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, across teams or part of a particular group? Um, so um, yes, we want we want to hire uh, developer relations folks um, because they're just going to be key to our growth, and we can't. We in indiv individual engineers on teams working on core infrastructure can't be everywhere um, and and in all um, communities. So we are hiring developer relations. It's not up on the website right now. I will, I will we'll go fix that. And those people will be working on our, our growth team. Um, so they'll be working with um, YK, Lena, um, uh, Patrick, our VP of growth, um, and, and just focused on engaging with developer communities everywhere and nurturing them and, um, and making it so that they can do more and more of their work on Replit. And they can use Replit as a way to showcase their frameworks and languages and, and what they can do 
Um, there's no, there's no better way to, you know, you can talk about our language and you can list out its features on a web page, but there's no better way than to just show people an example and have them be able to run and edit it right there. Do hackathon projects count as side projects? Yes, they do. Um, if you've if you've done cool hackathon stuff, that's awesome. The one piece that can sometimes be missing from hackathon projects is just the real live users. So, to the extent you can get your projects in front of actual humans and like have to deal with how they respond to it, um, that's that's icing on the cake. Um, but hackathon projects definitely count. I think this is a question for you, Jeremy. Um, how much work space and designing is involved in a product engineer role? Yeah, um, there's. I would say there's a lot of opportunity. So some product engineers want to learn and do more of that. And so there's a chance for them to do it. And some people prefer focusing on backend stuff and they're able to do that as well. But when I was a product engineer, my favorite thing to do was design something in Figma and then show it to the designers, let them critique it and teach me sort of the, the replit design way to do things or uh, go talk to the workspace engineers and say, hey, I want to do this thing in the workspace. You know, is this a terrible idea? And sort of uh, starting the process, like being the driving force and then relying on the other teams to help me uh, ship things. So there's a lot of room to, to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, Barbardia, did did Dave's bot that takes bugs from Slack is that is that written in a REPL? Yeah, it's in uh, it's in a REPL. It's written in yeah. TypeScript uh, using Slack's uh, Bolt JS framework. But yeah, it's in a REPL. Nice, nice. So that's that's pretty that's great dog food. And um, people have asked like, do we work asynchronously? Do we work synchronously? Um, as most people, as most teams on the planet that use Slack find, like we use Slack a little too much, and um, and it's it's great for asking questions, but it's it's tough for like organizing knowledge. So uh, so a new engineer on on Bardia's team just went and built a bot that will you put a little butterfly emoji next to a thread, and that gets pulled into Asana, which is um, which is where we track bugs. Um, and it's it's just so nice and civilized, and the, the emoji is beautiful too. So. All right, I'm still seeing a lot of internship questions. Um, I'm I'm writing it down to do. We should get the details up for the next. Like we're full for summer 2022 but we should put together the next season. I don't know if that's gonna be fall or winter. Um, and we're, we'll, we'll put up the dates for that and, and do it in, in bulk. Um, it should almost just be a permanent banner on replit.com slash careers. Yes. We get that question a lot. Yes, um, and excited. I'm, I'm always excited when people, um, people, yeah, to, to hear from interns, but especially people who are, um, you know, found programming on through Replit, um, they usually have like the best insight into where we need to take the product, um, more so than people who've been programming professionally with other tools for many, many years. So um, it's what, always, always excited. Yeah, actually somebody asked that question if, um, if when we're looking at side projects, it's a requirement they're built on Replit, definitely not. It's nice bonus points because it shows us you know our product, which usually means you're going to have good ideas, like Dan said. So not a requirement, but it's a fun bonus. Do we want to hire people who know the stack or people who are interested in the problem? Um, passion and interest in the in the domain and, and Replit is, is comes way ahead of particular technical skills. Um, that said, if you want to be a product engineer where you're going to be writing, um, you know, React TypeScript all day, like you should be able to, you should be comfortable with like a modern JavaScript framework and able to pick that. Um, pick that up quickly and same for 
Um, if you want to work on platform, like an understanding of Linux and containers um, and the ability to, to come up to speed quickly on Go are, are, are helpful. Um, but we don't, we, we're not, we're not combing through resumes, looking at languages and saying, oh, they're in or they're out based on that. Like so many other signals come, come ahead of that. That's, that's like 99th on the list, I think. Oh, there's an easy one. Do you have any pets? Yes. <laughs> that's Nala back there. And somewhere I have another dog named Kona. We have a small creatures Slack channel, um, thanks to Lima. So um, yes, if 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 um, if you come to join us, um, you will get access to to videos and photos of, of the pets of Replit. Um, how do we envision Replit ten years from now? I will. I I can't channel Amjad completely, but I'm I'm most excited about. Um, Replit continuing to be the best place to learn to program on the internet and just the easiest place to program on the internet. Um, and I think if we keep that up and keep adding capabilities, so we delay the point at which people feel like they need to use other tools, like we'll be the, the, comp we'll be the default computing platform that everyone's, everyone's building on. Um, that sounds outrageous to say, but um, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're here to do. Because if we achieve that, it means we've lowered the barrier to programming so much that it's so accessible that so many people are, are coming and using the tool. Um, are you focused on test-driven development and how is the code review process structured? Um, we don't practice test-driven development to the, like we're, we're not very ideological, we're not very do dogmatic, but um, we do we do place a lot of stock in code review, so um, so when you've you've got a pull request that's ready for someone to see, you you put a label on it and it goes on what we call the boops board, which is the board of pull requests ready for review. Um, and if it's short and small, it gets jacked up to the top because those are easy to review. Um, and uh, things don't go out until until they've been approved and people can also request changes. This is all part of like how we continuously give each other feedback. Um, code review is super, super important. Um, there's one here asking for entry level jobs. Would it be better to start as a software engineer if your goal is cybersecurity position? Um, I do think whatever the role is, there's a benefit to having experience with multiple different things. So it could help, uh, but probably you'll learn best on things you're most excited about. So it's definitely not a requirement. It might be a fun way to learn different things and try to apply them to each other. Though. I think we have pretty varied backgrounds here. Uh, some people, you know, uh, didn't go to any formal schooling. Some dropped out uh, and joined us. And then we have people with PhDs. So it's like a complete range. And um, related to another question, we've had former CS teachers as well join uh, Replit as engineers. Um, and they bring a lot of um, good perspective to our product. Yeah, and if you're, um, for teachers trying to come into engineering, we've had we've had several actually <laughs> come join us um, as teachers. I, I you Just their minds are, are, are just, full of, of all that knowledge of what it takes to, to bring people to programming. Um, and we've, we want to reflect that in our tool. So I think the biggest, like teachers are already strong communicators um, and, and show strong ownership. Uh, you, you have to for the, for the job. So um, that's great. I think where, um, where you can always get more experience is building robust systems that, services that other people have to use that have to stay up and, and working 24 seven. Um, so if, if I were going to practice one thing, it would be that like make a service, put it on the internet and, and get some real people to use it.
Um, do, do we sponsor H1B? Um, it's it's on a case by case basis, um, as as all visa issues are. Um, but reach out, talk to us, and we we can we can figure it out. I think I saw a question about um, how many get-togethers we have. Uh, so we have an offsite uh, once a year. Last year it was in Colorado, um, which was a few days of um, you know thinking about our product strategy, thinking about the company strategy, and then um, doing a lot of workshops, and then of course team bonding. Um, this year we have another one scheduled, uh, already for the summer, which is really fun. Um, we also have hubs in San Francisco and New York. So if you are in the area, you can always come to the office and work with people. We have office Thursdays, um, to encourage everyone to come at the same time. Um, and then we love it when Replit employees travel and meet each other. Um, so we've had folks, um, Jeremy, you know, was recently in Colorado hanging out with one of our, uh, with a bunch of engineers and designers. Um, and yeah, we do that all across the country. Yeah, they were making the rest of us jealous, <laughs> sending their photos from weekend ski outings and hanging out together. Here, here's another good one. Uh, What's the biggest problem for people that just got hired? I bet everyone has a different answer, but my answer is uh, it definitely feels like a fire hose when you start working at Replit. There's so much information. Uh, as we said, the Slack is extremely active, so it's hard to know what to pay attention to. Um, and so what I usually tell people is start by asking what feels like too many questions, like over-index on asking questions. People love to be helpful. And then eventually you'll start to see how things work and, and figure things out. All right, according to, according to my highly accurate clock, we've got three minutes here. So Bardia, Scott, Lima, Jeremy, do you have any last questions you wanna answer or, or wisdom to impart? Uh, I think this question is a good one to end on. Uh, what would be your advice for software engineers at the beginning of their path? Lima, Lima your path started early. I want to hear your answer first. Um, I, yeah, I would say, don't take my sort of particular story as like the only, you know, the archetype for Ar for Replit, but I started coding when I was very young. Um, I was seven years old when I got into it. Um, and then I parlayed that into a web development a business because I just loved coding that much that I would wanted to um, provide it for other people. Um, I did end up going to study computer science at a college, but my passions were always, you know, wanting to scratch my own itch and build something that I would use. And so Replit to me was like the kind of platform that I wish existed when I was younger. Um, but that would be my advice is to try and scratch your own itch. So, you know, software and coding and um, programming are becoming more important skills, um, just like reading and writing. Um, but you don't have to learn that for the sake of learning it. You can do it in order to solve problems you have. Um, and those can be, you know, problems like, um, you know, wanting to, you know, do something cool at work or at home, like automating a little thing here and there, all the way to like building a website, all the way to building a web app that is going to solve, you know, problems for other people. So um, just pursue your passions, pursue, you know, the end game, and then use programming as um, just another tool. Yeah, that's really good advice. My path was different. I definitely found computers early and liked tinkering with them. Uh, but I took a degree in electrical engineering because I was too focused on local job markets. <laughs> but I found that I liked the coding courses best. 
And so I wound up with a job, a job there, that job I wasn't particularly excited about, but I, I learned. And then I sort of uh, kept finding things I was more interested in until I got here. So I would just keep trying things, um, building things, and you'll learn a bunch along the way. And then it all adds up. And all of a sudden, you, you won't even realize how many things you know, until they're coming across and it feels a little bit easier. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I can't emphasize enough, like build, 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 and also share what you're doing and, and um, get excited and, and also write, write that, write about what you're, you're building uh, or find some way to share it with the, the world. Um, it's, it's, it's always, it's helpful for you and, and it shows people just how much you, how much you care. All right. Well, I want I want to thank you all. Um, we'll we'll do our best to respond in text form to all the questions here. Um, I've already got a bunch of LinkedIn notifications. LinkedIn is not the only way to reach us. I'm Dan at Replit.com. Um, please please email me. We're here. Jeremy is Jeremy at Replit.com. Lima is Lima at Replit.com. Bardia is Bardia at Replit.com, and Scott is Scott at Replit.com. So please. Um, Get in touch. Don't be shy. Um, you know, today, tomorrow may not be the time that um, that a job happens, but um, but we we love to to talk to people and um, and we also like to help people on their way, whatever stage of their careers, um, find what's next for them, even if it's not replit. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're always we're always here to help. So, all right, thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Great questions.